Now, we always tell stories for at least two reasons. One reason is to entertain, but the other reason is to teach. For if you listen closely to a story, you may find things in that story that will help you understand parts of your own life. We believe that it is important for people to treat each other well, but sometimes people forget that. So it was in the case of the woman who was known by the name of Red Flower. The Lenape people say that Red Flower lived a long time ago in a village beside the wide Mahikani Top River, the river we now know as the Hudson River to the south of here. As she lived beside that river with her mother and her father, her life was good. For of all the young women in her village, she was the best looking, and she knew it. <laughs> and if you didn't know it, she would tell you. <laughs> you would know? She knew she was so attractive that every young unmarried man wanted her for his wife. And it was true. All the young men admired her, for she was as graceful as a flower blowing in the wind. She had long, black, lustrous hair. She had bright, glowing eyes. She was intelligent. She was a strong person. She was a good worker. The only problem was she knew all that, too. And if you didn't know it, she would tell you. <laughs> she was very proud of herself to the point of thinking that no man in her village was good enough for her. That man, he was too skinny. That man, he was too fat. That one, not good looking enough. That one was too vain. He would not appreciate her. And so on and so on. You see, in those days, it was the women who chose who they would marry. And so the young men would dress well and try to impress the young women, hoping that perhaps someday the young woman they liked would come to the mother of that young man and say, I want to marry your son. But <laughs> Red Flower was not going to do that with anyone in her village because none of them were good enough for her. Oh, hey. people worry about this. Her mother and her father both spoke to her. They said, my daughter, you should not be so vain. Sometimes bad things happen to people who like themselves too much and like no one else as much as they like themselves. But Red Flower just said, oh, but I am so good looking, surely I am meant to admire myself. <laughs> now one day, Red Flower was walking through the forest, not far from the Mahikani Tool, from that river. And as she walked along, she began a sound. It was a sweet sound, almost like bird song, but longer than the song of a bird and sweeter. She followed that sound. She came to a clearing, and there she saw where that sound came from, for there sat a tall, good-looking, strange young man playing a flute. Ah, that music was so sweet, and that young man was very good-looking. Even though he was seated, she could tell he was tall. And his, his face just shone with red paint. And he had beautiful clothing made of wampum beads that glittered like the rainbow in the sun. And there were tattoos of water animals on his arms and on his cheeks, which made him look even better, for such tattoos were known to make a man look very attractive. She looked at him, and she smiled. He looked up at her, put the boot down, and nodded to her. I am Red Flower, she said, offering her name, and you should marry me. <laughs> the young man stood up. He was very tall and graceful. He, moved, he almost 
explode as he moved. He came close to her. He looked down at her and she said again, will you marry me? And he just lifted his hand and made the sign for yes, without saying even a single word. Ah, she thought, he is a silent one. That is good. It means he will enjoy listening to me. <laughs> she reached out and took him by the hand. Come, we must go and introduce you to my parents. And she noticed something a little strange. His hand was quite cold. But, she thought, that's all right. I'll warm him up soon enough. <laughs> and she began to walk through the forest with him until they came to her village. She led that young man right to the wigwam of her parents. She said, my father, my mother, look who I have found, the perfect man to be my husband, and I will marry him. Who is he? said the father. What is his name? Where does he come from? said the mother. Who are his parents? Oh, Red Flower said, you never appreciate anything that I like, do you? Well, we are leaving and we will not come back until you learn how to treat my husband to be better. And with that, Red Flower turned and walked <coughs> hand in hand with that tall stranger out of the village. Oh? Hey. Are we going to your village? She said to him, and again he raised his hand, just made the sign for yes. And they walked through the forest. As they walked along, mist began to form on the path, as often happens along a river. The mist was so thick they could barely see through it, and Red Flower lost track of how long they had been walking, how many steps they had taken since leaving her village. As they walked along, they came to a hill that she did not remember ever having seen before, and in the mist, they began to walk down that sandy hill, and it was strange. She thought, we must have come further than I thought we came. I am losing track of time because my husband-to-be is so wonderful. Oh, I am so happy, she thought. And as they walked along further and further down that sandy hill, soon they came to a place where it was clear. There were no trees or plants of any kind. There was nothing but sand. And there, in the midst of that sand, there were many wigwams, all made not of reeds, not of bark and sticks. No, they were made entirely of stone. They were the strangest wigwams she had ever seen. Is this your village? She said to her husband-to-be. And once again, he just raised his hand and made the sign for yes. And he led it into the village. Now there were people standing in front of their wigwams and they looked much like her husband-to-be. They all wore that same shiny wampum clothing. They were tall and slender and good-looking as he was and their eyes were black as obsidian. <coughs> they all turned and looked at her as she passed. None of them smiled. None of them spoke. They just stared at her without blinking. And she thought then how strange it was that her husband had not blinked once since she had met him, her husband-to-be, but then again, he was probably too busy looking at her to blink, and that was all right. Oh? Okay. He led her straight to the largest of the wigwams. Ah, she thought, he is probably the chief here. And he motioned for her to go inside, and she went in. There was nothing in that wigwam, not even a fire burning, just sand. And sitting in the sand at the back of the wigwam, a very old, old woman. The old woman looked up at her and said, Welcome! Welcome! Oh, thought Red Flower, she has a strange voice. <laughs> Who is this? She said to her husband-to-be. And for the first time he spoke, he said, This Yes, my grandmother. Oh, he does have a strange voice, she thought. But then again, in the dark, we don't need to talk, so I won't let that bother me. 
He motioned for her to sit. And then he said, Are you hungry? Yes, I am, she said. What do you want to eat? Um, I like deer meat. That is good. Wait here. Do not look outside. And he slipped out the door and was gone. And in almost no time, he was back with a freshly killed deer. He prepared it for her. And even though they did not cook it, she had eaten raw venison before. And it was good. It was fresh. And that night, as she slept on one side of the lodge with her husband to be on the other, she did as he said and did not look outside the door. But when the morning came, there was no bright sunlight shining through. It was still foggy and gray. And her husband-to-be sat up and she said to him, You know, you have still not told me your name. What is your name? And he said, My name is Amankamek. Amankamek. She had never heard a name like that before, or had she? It was strangely familiar, but she could not remember where she had heard it. He went out the door, and as she sat there, she turned to the old woman. The old woman looked at her and said, Granddaughter, you know who my grandson is? Well, his name is Amon Kamek, and he's quite good looking. Red Flower said, Ah, foolish girl. Do you ever want to go home to your parents again? Of course I do. I would miss my mother if I never saw her again. Ah, said the old woman. So, you do not really know where you are, do you? Where am I? <laughs> Look out the door of our wigwam. She crawled to the door, Red Flower did, and she leaned and looked out. Sorry. <coughs> she rubbed her eyes. <coughs> she looked again. Oh! It was terrible. For she could see outside, looking through that door, that there were the people of the village all in front of their lodges. But looking through that door as she was now looking, she could see they were not people at all. They were all giant snakes coiled up in front of their rock piles where they lived. And then she remembered who a Mankamek is. A Mankamek is the giant snake who lives under the river and carries away foolish young women who follow him because he can disguise himself to look like a handsome man. And those young women never come home again. What happens to them? No one knows. Perhaps they become snakes too. Or maybe a man comes when he grows tired of them just eats them. Red Flower knew she was in big trouble. What could she do? She looked back at the old woman, and the old woman said to her, Granddaughter, do you wish to go home? Is this true? Yes, said Red Flower. Ah, I will take pity on you. When the Makamek comes back with food, do not eat it. Pretend to eat it. Give it to me. And then ask him to hunt something hard to catch. And while he is hunting, I will take you home. Red Flower agreed. And soon a Mankamek came in to the door of the lodge, carrying a big wooden bowl in his hand. I have made very good porridge for you to eat. Why, to be, this is very good. And he handed her the bowl of porridge. But when she looked into that bowl and looked carefully, she saw it was not porridge at all. It was little worms and mice and crawling things, and they were not dead. They were alive and crawling around. <laughs> yes, said the Mankamek, eat up. <laughs> and Red Flower said, oh, this is so good. I must turn away from you and eat it, for it is our custom to always eat porridge with our backs turned. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and she turned and faced the old woman and began to feed her. And the old woman opened her mouth and go, well, 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 and swallowed down all those mice and rats and worms and crawlies. <laughs> and the old woman smiled. Good food. Yes. Good porridge. <coughs> then Red Flower remembered what the old woman had told her. Red Flower turned to Malcolm X and said, Oh, my husband, to be, look, all this food is gone and I am still hungry. Would you hunt for me? Yes, I am a great hunter. Whatever you wish, I will bring for you. <laughs> then, Red Flower said, I would like you to bring me a black elk with one horn with three spikes on it and a white spot on its right shoulder. <laughs> oh, this is hard to find, but I will get it for you. <laughs> and Amanka Mech went out the door. Red Flower looked out as he went and could see him, a giant snake crawling away. She turned and looked <clears throat> and saw the old woman had turned herself into a snake too. Get on my back. I will carry you, said the old woman. But you must tell me if you see even a single cloud in the sky. For the thunderers who live above do not like me and my grandson and will try to kill me with their lightning. <coughs> I will do as you say, said Red Flower. And she climbed on the cold, scaly back of the old woman snake and reached out and grabbed hold of the horn that was growing out of the head of the old woman snake. And then the old woman snake began to swim. Red Flower held sight. Swim, indeed, it was. She had not known it, for suddenly, as they went up and up and up, they broke the surface of the river. And the sun was shining again, and Red Flower had been under the water all that time. Now, as they swam along, the old woman snake said, Is there a cloud in the sky, granddaughter? Red Flower looked up. There was, indeed, one small cloud. No clouds, she said. No clouds at all. They continued along. Granddaughter, do you hear something? Said the old woman snake. And Red Flower looked back. Ho! Hey. Indeed, she had heard something. Ho! Hey. For they are swimming across the surface towards them. Ho! Hey. It was a mom come back with a black elk with one <laughs> horn with three tines and a white spot on his shoulder in his mouth, swimming towards them. He was saying, Stop! I have your fool! Swim faster, said Red Flower. Swim faster. <laughs> the old woman snake swam faster. Are there any clouds in the sky? Red Flower looked up. There was a large cloud coming closer. No clouds. None yet. <laughs> Keep swimming. The old woman was snake was swimming along, swimming along. And now that cloud was so close, they heard the rumble of thunder. I must die or die shouted the old woman snake, and she dove underwater. Red Flower let go of the horn, thinking she would drown, and her feet touched the bottom. She was right at the edge of the river, but Amal Kamek was right behind her, when suddenly, <laughs> lightning split the air. The rumble of thunder filled her ears. And when she opened her eyes again, the cloud and Amal Kamek were both gone. She came out of the river, wet and tired. She walked back to the wigwam of her parents. Where is your husband to be? said her father. <laughs> Did you visit his village? said her mother. I don't want to talk about it right now, <laughs> said Aunt Flower. Please excuse me. From that day on, Red Flower was a different person. She was kind to others. She no longer bragged about her appearance. And when a young man asked him to marry her, this young man was not very tall, was not very good looking, but had, they say, a very warm hand and an even warmer heart. And Red Flower said, yes, indeed. And they lived happily together. That is how the story goes. Hope? Hey.